Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing today? This is Sunday night, of course, and it is time for our Sunday night live show. Hope you are having a great week. Sun is finally out at long, long last. The weather is improving, and long may it continue. Uh, lots been going on here, which we will discuss a little bit later on. But don't forget, and you've got time before we start this, Get a pad and paper ready because we're going to be going through what seeds we're going to be sowing for next year. Just I've got a list of different types of veggies and stuff like that. I want to find out what varieties and what you're going to be sowing next year. A uh, bit of a discussion. We're going to be lots and lots of notes. I've got to admit, I hate taking down notes when I'm talking to you guys. but I'm going to do my best to try and do this with you. First of all, let's see if anybody is out there. Uh, we've got Turbo Stream saying good evening, Veg Podcasters. Good evening to you. Uh, Adrian is out there saying hello. Good evening to you. We've got Kate out there. She's saying good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. Uh, Gary is out there saying hello. Good evening to you. Philly SBB is out there. Hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Hargrave oh, Gas, evening all. Hope you've had a good week. I've finally been able to harvest some things, variable results. Let us know more on what your variable results have been like. Um, who else have we got? Graham is out there, evening all. Hope everyone's well. Good evening to you. Uh, who else have we got? Anna Jones is there, evening gardeners. Good evening to you. My dad is out there saying good evening on this sunny Sunday. Indeed, it's nice to get a bit of sun, isn't it? Uh, Nicola is out there. Evening, Richard, and what a lovely day here in Gaul. It seems to be lovely for everybody. And Amanda is out there. We've had pen and paper. Excellent. So everybody is prepared. I'm sure there's going to be more people coming along. Seems a little bit quiet, but it is a sunny Sunday, isn't it? When the sun's out, people forget because we're too busy down in our allotments and our gardens. Just having a quick swig of coffee. Uh, so how are we all doing? Has anybody got any interesting stories from their garden this week? I've got quite a few things. You're going to hear more, of course, on the podcast tomorrow night about what's been happening here at the Veg Ground Podcast HQ and allotment. But one of the highlights has been, we've got a negative as well, but I'll start off with a highlight. The hedgehogs have returned to our garden. Now, a couple of, well, a few days ago, my neighbours mentioned that she'd seen the hedgehogs underneath her shed. She's just had a huge, I say recently, about a year ago, had a huge outdoor shed built into their garden. It looks absolutely stunning, I've got to say. And uh, she's noticed the hedgehogs have been living underneath that shed. Well, they used to live underneath our shed, but they've now migrated over. But yesterday we saw them in our garden, which was great. I haven't seen hedgehogs here all year, which explains why we've had so many more slugs and snails. But having them back is very, very welcome, of course. And of course, there's been lots of harvest this year, week. Cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, chilies. Uh, what else have we had? Cabbage. Um, I'm trying to remember everything. There's been lots of food that we have harvested, so it's all going well. Uh, so quickly, it's on the comments. Digwell's joined, saying hi, guys. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Um, and we have got Amanda is saying a lovely day here in Leeds. I've got some cabbage, collie, radish, and pak choy direct sown today. Excellent. Uh, Jenny is out there saying hello, everyone. Hope you are well. Good evening to you. Um, yay to the hedgehogs, says Kate, or as I call them, battle hamsters. <laughs> I like that. We have a regular called Dave. Have a camera to watch him. Yes, I've seen that. It's great, isn't it? I must set up my camera again and see what we get. Uh, Graham says, Graham, blah, 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 blah. let me get my words out. Graham says, we'll definitely be growing mini munch cucumbers next year. Can't believe how many cucumbers I've had from them this year. Well, that that kind of feels like a good point to start us off with this discussion with our notepad and paper about what are you going to be sowing next year. Now, what I've done, I've gone, I've gone through and tried to make a list of various vegetables. Uh, we'll start with vegetables, then I've got fruits and herbs, and I've tried to put them into alphabetical order to try and get an idea 
of what we've got. So the first thing I've got on my list is artichokes. Is anybody going to be growing artichokes next year? For me, I've uh, I've got globe artichokes on the allotment and a few globe artichokes on the allotment as well. But we have sort of decided to get rid of both of those. The globe artichokes, we just didn't find any way of really making them edible without them being too much of a faff. So I feel that the globe artichokes have to go. The Jerusalem artichokes, we've grown them for years. We had loads and loads of Jerusalem artichokes every year, more than what we can eat, and they ended up rotted away. So I'm sort of on the cusp that we're probably not going to be doing artichokes. But of course, um, that's up to you guys, of course. Turbo Stream says, not much to report on my allotment recently. I seem to have lost my mojo for growing stuff. The main bit of my plot I grow veg on is looking very sparse. I think a lot of people are going through that at the moment, to be honest with you, Turbo Stream. Um, it, it, hopefully it will pass. What is it that is putting you off? Um, let's see. Absolutely. Uh, Jenny is saying artichokes are on her list. So there we go. Um, artichokes are on Jenny's list. Uh, already sown some green manure, says Tyre Stream, in the empty bits where the potatoes and broad beans were. Love green manures. Um, trying to grow lots and lots of those. Kate says, I'm not sure about artichokes. Great for bees, so tempted. That is true. They, the globe artichokes and even the Jerusalem artichokes when they flower, um, they are great for bees, it has to be said. It's just, as I've said time and time again, this is me having to work out what my allotment and my garden is for. It's for growing food. So if I'm not eating it, it probably shouldn't be there. Uh, get it dug up. I can collect in the week coming, says Nicola. Is that the globe artichoke? You want the globe artichoke? I will try and dig it up this week for you then if you want it. Let me know when you are down. So artichoke is the first one I've got on the list. Next, I have got asparagus. Um, now, I love asparagus. We grow quite a bit of it quite successfully down on the Yolomon, despite the weeds. And asparagus generally hates weeds. But back in, I can't remember if it was January, February, earlier this year, the beginning of this year anyway, I actually sowed some asparagus from seed. And they germinated quite well. They're still in pots. They're in large pots growing outside. And they seem to be doing really, really well. So... What I'm thinking of doing with asparagus is actually getting an asparagus bed here at home. Um, I'm probably going to grow more from seed next year anyway, but get some of these in the ground as well. But what I want to do with the asparagus that I'm going to grow at home is actually get the bed really, really well prepared so that there's absolutely no weeds. It's easier said than done, but I, the biggest problem with us, or the biggest thing I feel we have to do with asparagus is prepare the ground. So asparagus for me is on the list. Anybody got any recommendations of varieties or things like that? Um, what else have we got? So, so people are congratulating Digwell on the competition. There was a photo up and I think a video up as well. So go and check it up in the uh, local show. Uh, don't forget we are running. Where's the... Um, the Alternative Veg Grower Show, which I've added the link in the comments if you want to find out more. Uh, we have only got a couple of weeks before the closing date. haven't got that many pictures, so I could do with quite a few more if you are looking to get involved. And if it is a success, we're hoping next year to actually get a few prizes. We're just going to make it a success this year to warrant it for next year. Uh, Nicola says, some of my Jerusalem artichokes are grown in just wood chip. Yeah, I said, I'm not, it, we just found them to be a bit wasteful, is why we're not doing art, uh, Jerusalem artichokes anymore. Um, 
the turbo stream has said earlier he's lost his mojo. I don't know the reason. I guess the weather has played its part. My rig, runner bean wig ran blew over and the plants died. So I pulled that up this week. I understand that weather has been a bit of a problem this year. Um, but next year could be different. That's all we got to think. And I think it's uh, all about getting it prepared for next year. As, as Digra is also saying, mega, mega deep mulch the asparagus equals no weeds. Yeah, exactly. Mega deep mulch on the asparagus that's already growing and preparing the bed for the next bed of asparagus as well is top of my list for this new winter. Kate says no to the asparagus. I'm one of those people who are genetically predisposed to the weird smell issue and I can't stand it. That's interesting. I didn't know there was such a thing, but that's very, very interesting. Uh, Jenny says I would love to grow asparagus at, at I would love to grow asparagus, but need to wait till I have an allotment. I can't justify the space at home. I know someone who grows asparagus with strawberries, which seems to work well. It does work well, actually, yeah. Um, but, yeah, they are one that takes up a lot of space. Um, so, Turbo Stream, on the upside, my late French beans are showing, so hopefully they'll survive in grown in the builder's bucket. We've got a video about that. Um coming up a little bit later uh what else have we got i think i think oh digwell's actually made a good point actually same thing that i have i gave up with bamboo canes for beans hazel sticks now still not, not many beans though I've, I've done all right with beans but i agree hazel sticks for me are the way forward i have a hazel tree on elotment just for the sticks bamboo i have got a few bamboo canes don't get me wrong but they're just not strong enough compared to hazel. So, yeah. Um, right. Next on my list, I have beans. Now, this could be broad beans, green beans, runner beans, French beans, anything like that. There's a big, wide range of beans, which is what tallies up with everyone else is saying. Uh, good evening. Um, hope everyone is well, says Rebecca. Lovely to see you. So, when it comes to beans, I will definitely be growing broad beans, which I only grow broad beans over winter. They'll probably be planted October, November time. Um, so I just prefer to do them over winter. When my wife doesn't really like broad beans, so I just want to uh, uh, get them over winter. And it will probably be something like Aqua Dolce Claudia um, would be my choice of that. Um, French beans and runner beans, not sure what varieties I'm going to do of those, but definitely going to be doing some Bellotti beans because they've done really well this year. Just wait for them to dry out, but we've got so many Bellotti beans. And then what else was that? The cannellini beans as well. Definitely want to do those. So beans, cannellini, Bellotti. Uh, make a note of that. So I hate taking notes while talking. So uh, you have to bear with me. Apologies with that. Uh, so Turbo Turbo Stream says my usual list of staples on the plot: parsnip, beetroot, French beans, and broad beans, which I grow every year. Good choices, yeah. Good choices indeed. Beans, where to start? So many options. Absolutely. That's why I um. That's why I thought we'll find out some of your favourites. Uh, so get sharing. Cobra climbing beans are hard to beat. Cobra, I'll make a note of that. I think I've tried those in the past and they were very, very good. Uh, Kate says, I'm replacing my canes with hazel. My canes snapped under the weight of massive gigantes I'm growing this year. Uh, Nicola says, funny enough, I want to grow gigante beans new next year gigante is going on my list as well then if we can get some of those seeds we will give that a try uh digwell looking at the canes i used that uh, my pasta best so i'm toying with the idea of a permanent bean support yeah I, i've got to admit you know this is why i moved to hazel bamboo canes are pretty weak uh, French beans, I do love purple teepee. Purple teepee is another very good choice, actually. I think we've got that one somewhere. Purple teepee, nice purple one, too. Um, I'm trying to remember the runner beans that I've grown in the past that were very, very good. 
were, and I can't remember the name of the variety of them, but it'll come to me when I don't think of it. Jenny says, I grow so many varieties of beans. One of my favourite winter staples and easy to store. Beans to eat fresh and beans to dry. Yeah, yeah, and this is it. I want to know what you are growing. Um, this year I did well with collies, so we'll be trying it again. We will be coming to cauliflower in a little bit. Uh, Andrew has joined. Evening all from Croatia. Good evening to you. Um, it's been a good year for cauliflower's turbo stream, says Graham. Indeed it has. Digwell says, my go-to dwarf French beans are Faraday. Three years superb yield. Faraday. I'm going to write that down because I like the idea of that. And then yin and yang from Kate. Yin yang and Jack o Jack Jack. Jacobson, Jacobson cattle. Okay, we'll pipe those down. We'll give those a try. And then Hargrave Gas has came in. Scarlet Emperor Runner Beans. They've also won I've I've grown this year. They've done actually very, very well, actually. Um I'm trying to grow lots of beans next year. I did it this year. I want to grow more last year. Uh, what else? Nicola says crimson broad beans. Crimson broad beans. I'll put that down. Are they are they one that can overwinter? Um, oh, Jacob's cattle, not Jacobson cattle. There we go. Uh, Andrew says bad year in Croatia for peppers, French beans, and runner beans, and of course parsnips. I think a lot of people have been having travels with um parsnips and what have you next i've got beetroot anybody got any ideas of any good varieties or beetroot varieties that you're going to be growing next year um just saw anna jones says Alleg allegra i think that's pronounced oh i'll make a note of that allegra are my favorite french beans very slim ones to cook whole a good idea is good idea indeed um four beans are always the dwarf satin french beans are usually dwarf purple amethyst there we go um all good ideas um uh jenny says this year's beans include gigantes runner's celebration and lady die or oh, lady die actually that's a good one i grew that um i have to pipe that down uh, polka, violet climbing, belotti, Jacob's cattle beans, butter bean, yin yang, belotti, broad beans. Don't remember the two varieties. Um, butter bean, butter bean, and didn't think of that. Didn't think of that. Um, yeah. Digwell has, for the last two years, have had rubbish beans for two years now in general. I think, I just think some years are bad, some are good. It, it, it does depend, doesn't it? We've done really well with beans this year, so apologies if you have had a bad one, but it's been good for me. Beetroot is my big failure this year. Leaves are great, but roots didn't bulb up. Uh, it's interesting because I think Stuart, who's not here tonight, he has had the same trouble. But my beetroot has done really, really well. We've, we've grown two different varieties, uh, Boltardi and Chogia, however they're pronounced. Um, which both I feel have done really well. I really liked um, the Chogia because of the the different colour, the sort of white ring, white and purple rings that you get with Chogia. So I really liked those. Um, and Boltardi was good as well. Uh, Digra says Zeppo RZ. Zeppo RZ for beetroot. That sounds like a good super quality. That sounds interesting. And Amanda says, I had a summer medley runner beans this year. A couple of my fellow plot holders said they're the best they've had. One isn't easily impressed, so I think they must have been good. They were a bit price yet, but seemingly worth it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Last year was good for beans. Says Tybo Stream, I will still be eating them in the winter. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. And Rebecca says, I've enjoyed Chugia this year as well, Richard. Yeah, Chugia for me. I mean, we had one today. They were really nice, big size, almost to the point they're too big. But I'm happy with them. I'm very, 
very happy with them. Just realised one that I forgot to mention was aubergine. Anybody got any good aubergine varieties? We did really well with a variety called Little Fingers. I'm going to write that down, actually. Um, they've performed really well. Nice, sort of slim, but usable aubergines. And this year, aubergines have done well as well. Jenny says, I've enjoyed the yellow beetroot and the slindra shaped ones, but the name escapes me. Oh, can't think of that. Can't think what they might be, but that's interesting indeed. Uh, Digwell says, can't see the point of red and white bit through as they go red when cooked. Ours, when we roasted them, they actually stayed red and white. And I was thinking if they're pickled, they might stay the same colour as well. But I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean by that. Um, I will be trying onions again, but crucially will grow under a veggie mesh as th this year's maggot fest. Yeah. Uh, all my aubergines failed this year again, not giving out the loan. No, I, aubergines are quite tricky. I think the thing to remember with aubergines is start them early. They need a long growing season like chilies. Um, they need a long growing season to so start them early. I, when I send them out in the supporters club, that's when I will be sowing them myself. Um, they do need a bit of heat just to keep them going through the colder months. I like Slim Jim aubergine. Slim Jim. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. There's um, Black Beauty as well, isn't it? Cool. Is it Black Beauty? Yeah, Black Beauty is, is a good one too. Let's make a note of that. So uh, what else have we got? Hello, everyone. It's very sorry I'm late. I hit the thumbs when I came in. Forgot to say, everyone, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Don't forget to click the, the notification so that you know when we go live. Uh, my favourite aubergine is Pinstripe. That sounds interesting. Pinstripe. That sounds very interesting. They only have small fruit, but easier to get ripe, etc. That's what I found. The smaller ones are easier to get ripe, but the um, the bigger ones, the normal sizes, are, um, Digwell has said here, um, Black Beauty is a pretty good one. He also says Rosa Bianca for pretty ones. Rosa Bianca. That's good. That's good. So moving on, I should say for those that have joined, we're just making a list of vegetables that we're going to be growing next year. Um, oh, uh, Hargrave says, I've grown aubergine white knight. I'm going to make a note of that. Really interesting shape and colour and has grown well. White knight, I'll make a note of that. And... Green Knight as well, but they haven't fruited yet. They sound very interesting, I've got to say. Um, Bethan's Kitchen and Gun. Hello, all. Sorry, I'm late. Lovely to see you, Bethan. I hope you are well. What else have we got? Okay, so moving on from beetroot and aubergines. Next one I've got is broccoli. Um Broccoli slash calibres. We'll put those in the same group. This is this is one that I've I've been growing quite successfully this year. I'm not I've not in the past been a huge fan of either of these, and I know they are a tricky one to grow, but we did really well on the broccoli this year. So I think we will be doing it again. Digwell says he's done a video on the aubergine dishes. Wink, wink. Go check it out on the Digwell uh, YouTube channel. Digwell Greenfingers YouTube channel. Um, yeah, uh, broccoli, broccoli. I don't think I've really got any particular varieties that I really like. I just grew what I had, um, and they seem to do really quite successful. Um so if anybody does have any suggestions for broccoli or anything like that that they found to be really, really good, let us know. Turbo Stream says, I planted calories this year, so hopefully they provide at least one harvest. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't think anybody seems to have any ideas for broccoli, but we can always come back. Next, I have Brussels sprouts. Uh, I love a good Brussels sprout. For me... 
it's Dark Moor, Dark Moor 42, or whatever it is. Um, that's done really well for me. The, the sprouts, I'm actually going to have to harvest them pretty soon because they are huge and ready to come off. I sowed them in January, and I think this year they just seem to have grown really, really quickly. Um, always so. Yeah, Brussels sprouts. Next year, we're going to try a, a, a few sowings of bra, 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 Brussels sprouts. Loads of broccoli, says Jenny. A favourite in our house. I've got multiple packets in the winter sale, so I'm growing whatever they are. Uh, fantastic. Oh, uh, only ever grow marathon broccoli. Always does well. Marathon. So that's an excellent idea. Marathon. Um We'll add that to the list. Digwell says, not bothering with calories or broccoli in the future. Too much space for too little reward. Fair enough. Uh, purple sprouting broccoli for me is one that I grow every year. It's it's a long-term crop plant, but it does do quite well, I find, and I quite enjoy it. I forgot to add purple sprouting broccoli. I might make a note of that now. Um, but it does do quite well. For us i find do you include calyx in brussels sprouts um we can do we can do we'll throw that in there if you so desire um jenny says my tomato seed wish list has grown considerably blame digwell i need that steve Dig digwell made me do it t-shirt <laughs> indeed indeed um good idea indeed Turbo stream usually grow Evesham special Brussels sprouts. They seem to be a sweeter taste from Wilco. So probably the last time I grow that one. Evesham special. Excellent. I will add a note of that. Um, right. What's next? Cabbage. Cabbage is one that I think would keep us going for quite a while because I, you know, cabbage you can grow you kind of want your summer your spring your winter cabbage you know so it, it's one that i think we need growing all year round now on the note of spring cabbage um i think you know I'm trying to remember what they're called i had one today for our our, our dinner um i just sown the seeds i mean oh what are those ones called it's on the tip of my tongue. There was spring cabbage. Um, that's going to annoy me. But yes, um, obviously you've got your crisp-headed, your savoy, your wrinkly cabbage, different ones like that. Um, Hargrave Gats, greyhound. That's a good one. Greyhound, nice pointy heads. Just need to keep the butterflies off. A definite point. Um Oh, I thought I had the name of the one I'm thinking of just there, and it's gone for me. Digwell says two choices for Brussels, Brody and Crispus. Brody, Crispus. I'll add those to the list. Um, I can't think, it's annoying me. It's annoying me what that cabbage is. Uh, cabbage is off my list. Don't really like, and the flipping slugs annoy me under every layer. Ah, right, I've got a tip for that. When you harvest your cabbage, pull it in some salt water for half an hour, and the slugs and snails will leave. Um, e easy, easy way to get rid of it. Uh, cabbage, only Savoy for me, Rigoletto, etc. The, re the rest are so cheap, not worth growing. I'm going to make a note of Rigoletto. Uh, I I personally, I mean, I do prefer the Savoy cabbages. I think they taste better, but I just uh, I can't. This is annoying me. I can't remember the name of it. It's name of a town or something. Um, I do love a Savoy cabbage. Yeah, we're all with you. Uh, Bethan says I had asparagus plants sow themselves. Happy to send you my spare ones. Uh, I've got plenty of asparagus plants, but um, uh, if you come into that show, um, we'll sort them out, sort it out there. Um, 
I, is it Wheelie's Imperial? It's a good spring cabbage. It's not, but I've had that to the list. Wheeler's Imperial. But Gary has just kind of said it. Yes, Durham Spring Early. Spring Early is the one I was thinking of. Um, they, for me, have done really, really well. Um, really well. Jenny says, I prefer red cabbages and butterflies don't seem to bother them. I do love green cabbages, though. I always grow more than I need to harvest a few. Yeah, that's probably true about red cabbages. I don't, I've never really tried it, but a good idea. Good idea. Uh, right, we do have a grow a sew along video I'm going to show for you guys. This was uh, something that you guys are was suggested to me um excuse please excuse the sound on this i was trying a different microphone in normal but it got the point of it across uh, let's have a quick look at this video <clears throat> right so for this week's so along you guys came up with the idea of planting beans inside a builder's bucket this was inspired by turbo streams idea that he is doing himself and i thought that was a good idea for us so along good little challenge i think we can all participate in as well so please do grab yourself a builder's bucket like this fill it out with compost and sow some seeds so as i said i've got my builder's bucket here and what i've done instead of drilling in the bottom i've drilled a hole in the side this is my I often do this with pots really. I find this is a way of making a, a soft water well on the bottom while still allowing the water to escape. It's the idea based on the veggie pod. Then I filled that container up with plenty of compost right pretty much up to the top. It's quite a weighty bucket now. And what we're gonna do now is sow the French bean seeds. So I rummaged around my seeds and I found these ones from Thompson & Morgan, Sonsetta I think it's pronounced, and they are a dwarf bean which I figured would be good to do at this time of year because I think dwarf beans might just grow a little bit quicker and be able to survive as it's such a late time in the year. These are what the seeds look like, they're fairly large and easy to handle. We're just going to pop these in here. I go for about two centimetres deep with these, that should give them plenty of depth and growth in order to try and make the most out of them. We're just puffing them in. I was going to try and do them at the same distance all the way around, but looking at the amount of space we have, it's going to be a bit tight to fit these all in. So let's got the French beans now We're inside this builder's bucket, sewn. It's going to tamp them all down, make sure they're all fully covered and in contact with the soil. Now I know when we said this last week, Turbo Stream was having them inside his porch as a way of being able to grow and make the use of that. I'm going to leave these outside for the time being. They may go inside the greenhouse at a later date, but just for now, I'm going to leave them outside. And I ask you guys, as we've said, this is a challenge for everyone to sew along and give it a try. Let us know how you get on. Back to the studio. Indeed, yes, a sewing um, beans in a bucket as suggested by Turbo Stream from this week's Sew Along. So you guys also... If you want to join in, then please do. And we'll see how well they get on later on in the year. This gives you guys a chance to start to think up of another sew along for next week. And I quite like the idea of making it a bit challenging, growing them in something a bit different like that. Uh, so back to where were we? Turbo Stream says we'll continue to sow cabbages microgreens though. Perhaps a better way to eat them. It's a good way of using up excess seeds, isn't it? Microgreens. Kate says, Tete Noir, Tete Noir, early autumn. Hang on, I've got to look at this screen. Tete Noir, early autumn cabbage is a good one. Not heard of that. I'm going to make a note of that. Tete Noir. I'll make a note of that. Idaho says, this is the first year I haven't intentionally grown brassicas. They're plagued with cabbage, butterfly and aphids. My best bet is smooth leaf kale or kohlrabi. I'm still contemplating some for full. Yeah, 
butterflies have been a problem for me as well. Uh, the yellow beans you sent in your gift pack have been lovely. I'm trying to remember what they were. I think they might have been cop. I think they might have been Lady Die, but I can't remember. But, yeah, I agree. They have been really good. Uh, Thompson and Morgan have a good sale at the moment. Not that I've made a huge order. Then there's face blue smiling, so there's an emoji or saying I can't see. Uh, Digwell says, I prefer to melt a hole with a hot wad, no plastic swarf. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I just did whatever suits us. Uh, Terry, my thought is they would flower outside, then hopefully grow on the porch as the weather turns cold. That's my idea as well. So, yeah. Yeah. And Jenny says, lazy housewife beans are ideal to sow now. Now, a great light variety. That sounds cool. That sounds cool. I'll have to look into that. So moving on from cabbage, what have we got? Carrots. Carrots. We've done quite well with carrots. You know, I'm still thinning out sowings that we made earlier on in the year, right at the beginning of the year, um, but still enjoying the ones, the thinnings as we eat them as well. And then we've got the rainbow carrots in another bucket, which are also doing really well. In fact, I'm going to make a note of the rainbow carrots because they have done really well for us. Um, and then the early 90s too have done well for us as well. So I'll put those on the list. Also noticed, you may remember I was doing the, um, uh, what do you call it, straw bell garden this year, and it, it just didn't seem to work for some reason. And I sowed carrot seeds straight into the straw bells or, or compost on top, and they didn't germinate until a few weeks ago. They're starting to grow now. They're just very, very slow, I've got to say. Um, not impressed with straw bell gardening at the moment. Kate says, my rainbow and ox heart have done well this year. Is this carrots? Is this carrots? Is this a rainbow and ox heart? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Idaho says, great idea to be able to move indoors. And dig well, my dwarf French beans are sown in a bucket as well. Bethan says, I've grown Pongo dwarf beans and they were great. Pongo dwarf beans, never heard of them. But that sounds interesting. Um, yeah, carrots, carrots. Uh, what's the other? The um, autumn king as well. That's a very good one to grow. Um, oh, they were carrots that uh, Kate said earlier, which was the rainbow carrots and the ox heart. Let's make a note of ox heart. Sounds like a good idea indeed. And then. I grow a few carrots in a bucket by my back door. The badger digs them up on the allotment, and I'm not that keen on carrots anyway. Sorry, I've got to, I'm still got to look at this screen when talking. Um, it's, you know, if you're not keen on certain stuff, there's no point growing it. But uh, I think, grow if you know, whatever, like, whatever you want to do, of course. Um, Anna Jones, early 90s too, and Autumn King too. Autumn King was one. I was thinking of as well. I never quite understand what the two is. Is there a number one, a number three as well? No idea. Uh, Idaho says, I'm growing Muscot dwarf French beans in a stacking planter. Just starting to develop the beans. Sounds interesting indeed. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I hope they do. I, I Oh yeah, hope they do okay. Sweet candle have lost the candle the carrots have lost their appeal. No longer sweet, probably overbred. It's always the way, isn't it? Always the way. I think there's quite a few. Rainbow carrots, early nanties, ox heart, and autumn keen is some good ideas for some carrots. Now next I've got cauliflower. Cauliflower, which is absolutely We've done really well with cauliflower this year. We, you know, we've got plenty of cauliflower cheese in the freezer. We've got, we've done really, really well with cauliflower. Cauliflower, I always feel, is one of the harder ones to grow. Um, but the, the variety I tend to grow is all year round, purely because it's it can pretty much be sown all year round. 
I always find you get lots of seeds. I know the germination rate isn't that high on the cauliflower, but you always get lots of seeds and they seem to do really, really well uh, for us. There's probably better cauliflowers out there and I'd love to hear um, any ideas of what you have for decent cauliflowers. Um, any ideas? Any ideas at all? I've always said cauliflowers are one of the hardest ones to grow and to grow white. But I think if you grow them for a summer crop, that's where the problem become because they you got to harvest them straight away. But when you grow them for the the spring or winter crops, they seem to do much much better, in my opinion. I uh, don't know what you think on that, but that's certainly what I have found. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, cauliflowers. Any ideas on the cauliflowers? Or after that, I'm just looking at the time, because this is the only on sea so far. Uh, dig route, Chambord, Igloo, and North Foreland for me. Chambord, Igloo, and North Foreland. Um, I have all year round. They are often small, but that's that. But that's it. I also like green and purple ones. Yeah, you can get them in different colours, can't you? Uh, cauliflowers, but I think small cauliflowers are good, uh, especially as it's just me and the wife. Um, they suit us. Cauliflowers were igloo. Sowed a few of you all year round to plant in the autumn. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, cauliflower all year round. Celeriac and celery is next on my uh, next on my list. Celeriac and celery. This is uh, becoming quite a challenge to get through all these. Celeriac, I'm probably not going to grow next year. But celery, we've done really well this year. It's very slow growing. It's in the ground for a very long time, we found. Is it worth it? I think it is because we use them so much in cooking, but then you need quite a few of them and making sure there's plenty of moisture in the soil is a hard thing. They do really well in the soil, in the veggie pod, sorry, because they're, they're always moist. So I can't think of any varieties of either of those particularly that I'm going to be growing. Uh, chicory. I know some people don't like chicory, but I love the stuff. I'm definitely going to be growing that. Um, <laughs> Bethan says, I usually grow whatever is sent in the gift bag. Yes. Members of our supporters club, which you can find on the vegetablepodcast.co.uk, get a collection of seeds sent every month. They can be sown that very month, and they seem to do quite well. Um, I'll try and balance those out nicely and try and mix them up so that we can be growing all year round. Um, yeah, I, I've said chicory and, and so on. I've got chard as well, which I am going to be growing. I quite like chard, but too much it grows so well and you end up with too much of it. It ends up a lot for feeding the chickens, but we're going to, definitely going to be doing chard, specifically the rainbow chard, because I like the red, the yellow, and the orange colours that we can get from them. Then we've got courgette as well. Going to be growing courgettes quite a bit next year, because, uh, well, I say grow, grow courgettes quite a bit ne next year. We've had loads of courgettes this year, really quite a few, too many for us. But... Um, We're, we're going to grow more next year as well. Uh, the carrot variety numbers are just different varieties, so close to each other they do not need a new name. That's what I was wondering. Thank you. Uh, what else have we got? Facebook user. I have a go at Flora Blanca cauliflower. Excellent. Uh, the pellet chicken pellets in the hull and flush blood and, blood and bone around the hull seem to work with cauliflower for me when I planted them out. Don't forget to add some lime as well. Um, yeah, um, courgettes. So do I have any particular favourite courgette? I can't think of any personally. But Hargrave Gas is saying it is called Golden. They have at Premier Seeds. Courgette. Golden. Um, 
I mean, I like to try and grow the green ones and the yellow ones. Yellow ones, I think, aren't as productive as the green ones, but that's probably a good thing. Uh, yellow ones every time for me. Solil and Solil and Atlantina Polka are my fabs. Sound really, really nice. Excellent. So courgettes. I mean. How many plants do you need? How many plant courgette plants do you need? Um, all green bush is never lets you down, says Rebecca. All green bush. I think that's the two I've got growing in my garden, actually. Um, way, way too many courgettes for us. Uh, the ones down on the allotment haven't produced anything yet, but they were later going in. But I'm hoping the ones at home are going to, finish soon so those ones down the allotment will take over digwell says two plants maximum for courgettes i have to agree um two courgettes seem to do enough uh love courgette will probably grow shooting star gorillas mix golden patty pans and zephyr uh good ideas actually a shooting star uh, make a note of that um, all good ideas indeed. Now we're coming up to the next one, cucumbers. And I say this as um, today I've, how many cucumber plants have I grown? I've grown three cucumber plants at home. I had a few down on the allotment, but they got stolen, which is really, really annoying. But here at home, we had um, Venlo pickling as a our pickling cucumber, which has been a really, really good productive pickling cucumber but the plants they've almost like a fan train as i describe them um, and i've picked five cucumbers from that today which we're going to pickle and make into another couple of jars of pickled cucumbers along with the jars we already have um, and then we've got bella f1 and what was the other one can't remember the other one but they've done really well again i've picked three cucumbers today these are the standard salad cucumbers really nice and delicious absolutely fantastic plants um better f1 really has blown me away so i'm going to make a note definitely going to be growing those next year i'll put it like that cucumber i'll make a note of that uh venlo pickling and um what did i say bella f1 somebody earlier said what was it M uh, mini munch mini munch that was like a a nice idea as well uh anybody else got any ideas digwell says as long as you pick them regular leave them to grow and they will stop producing talking about courgettes uh yeah indeed you do need to pick them regularly uh, my one courgette plant that survived promptly got eaten the same night I planted it. Slugs and snails are a bit of a problem for you, aren't they, at the moment? Uh, Idaho, I'm growing quite a few varieties of courgettes. The one I'm liking at the moment is Zephyr. A lot of people saying Zephyr. Uh, Kate says, I bought some exploding cucumber seeds, like to live dangerously. Got my eye gear at the ready for next year. They're good, those exploding cucumber seeds. They really are. Uh, Emily, I can't remember if it was called Emily. No, I don't think it was. I can't remember, but um, good, good enough. Uh, crystal apple and crystal lemon is from Jenny. Uh, I grew those a few years ago. Um, they were interesting. They were very interesting. Might try them again next year. Cucamelon. Oh, I've not heard that one mentioned for quite a while. Cucamelon, dragon's egg. That sounds very interesting. Um, delicious, fun and interesting. Interesting. Digwell says, don't Venlo bad for me this year. Honey plus, fantastic. Honey plus. Um, that's interesting as well. Venlo for me have been a fantastic plant. They do go over quite quick, I've noticed, though. Uh, Rebecca says crystal lemon's been fun to grow. However, La Diva has given me so many this year. La Diva. Yep. Uh, Digwell says mini munch are good too. I'm sure somebody mentioned, I think it was Graham who mentioned 
mini munch earlier too. Uh, Nicholas says Diva as well. The Diva. I've never heard of them, so I'm going to try that, but I'll try it. Andrew says, you think you got problems with slugs? My mum put down some slug pellets and the next morning collected 176 dead ends. Wow. That's a lot. It's been a wet year this year, so it's not surprising we're having so many problems with slugs. Uh, Hargrave, I hit a couple of muscle, massive cucumbers off Telegraph this year. Little ones are still growing. Telegraph. I might get a bit carried away with cucumbers next year in this way because there's so many that I want to grow. But uh, Kerry, I second La Diva. Excellent. I've, I've not heard of that one. So uh, 89p on TNM. Excellent. Uh, I'll give that a try. I've heard a lot about Honey Plus. I might try those. Um, now, it's something to think about, isn't it? No. Next on my list is something I personally won't be going, fennel, just because I don't like the flavour of aniseed. I know I've it, sown it in a sow along, but I cannot stand aniseed, so I'm not growing fennel this year. Um, Digwell says, Cucumel, do not give them their own space. Let them twine around any other plants. A lovely surprise is finding the fruits everywhere. I grew cucumel before when they were all in the range, and I wasn't that impressed with them. They grew well, but I wasn't that impressed with them. The one thing I haven't made a note of that I'm going to recommend, I haven't grown it for a couple of years now. I keep getting told off but from the wife before not growing them, but they are Cape Gooseberry or Fissilis, I think it's pronounced. Um, they grew loads and loads of these really sweet yellow fruits. They're the type of thing you usually find as like a decoration, but we loved the flavour of those. And a couple of plants, they grew big and they produced a lot of plants. So, yeah, um, Cape Gooseberries, it was called. That's one I'm going to throw out there. Um, let's make a note of that, Cape Gooseberries. I'm making a note of that to throw that out there as well. Da, 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 da. Fennel, yeah, so I'm not going to be growing fennel. Garlic, well, garlic, as you know, I grow every year and I'm potting in my garlic in about a month yeah a month to the day is when my garlic goes in it will be extra early white it will be elephant garlic and uh, basically the ones that i've grown this year what have we got what have we got uh turbo string the squash has survived the last time i looked i circled the plant with a length of bramble stalks there we go. Bramble. Somebody else recommended bramble stalks the other day. Fennel, the plant that is the anti-companion of every other plant. Isn't it just? It, isn't it just? Kerry says, I've grown them, but no fruit yet. Cape gooseberries, they are fantastic, honestly. They last for us. They lasted right up until December before we had to, before the plant died back. So don't worry that you've got no fruit yet. They are very late fruiting. Digwell says, Cape gooseberries are great. Never get home from the plot. They really are, aren't they? Absolutely delicious. Right, guys, I have got a tour video to share with you while we take our, a, a quick break. So um, this is from Amanda all the way in Leeds. Let's have a look at this one. This is Amanda and this is my plot in Osmondthorpe in Leeds. I'm about a 15 minute bus ride away from the city centre, so quite close. Um, and as you can see, my plot is actually next to this lovely seating area where we have our barbecues. And this is soon to be a, a meadow, so I'm quite nicely situated. Sometimes as well over there, I hear the school children practicing their recorders. So that's obviously a lovely accompaniment to my to my plotting. Um, so just to start with saying that I used to have this bit of plot up here. Um, a couple of weeks ago, sadly, I made the decision to, to sort of give that plot up and pass it on. Um, just basically in, in terms of making the plot manageable with my house. So I'm at the process now of clearing this, moving things over. 
and then once that's done I'm gonna trim it all down and burn all the rubbish so hopefully it's as nice as possible for the new plot holders um this is my plot so this was my original first bit of plot and I love it um I've worked over the last couple of weeks a little bit every day really just making it more manageable now so hopefully just an hour a week and it will it will stay ticking over um so here is my first bed i've got a rose bush there and a willow tree which i'm hoping is going to get taller rather than bushier one day um this was two beds but i've just merged it together just to get as much space as possible i've got my new fire pit there and then as we go round, I'm going to be building a brassica cage here for some um, cauliflowers and some cabbage. But I've got some leeks in, some spring onions and some um, newly sown spring onions. And I'm going to just do successional sows of those to the left. Um, here is my flower bed. So it's obviously got raspberries in there too, but I'm just hoping to put flowers in that will just come back year after year. So this just looks after itself. I'm quite big on feeding the birds. Um, so this is my new bird feeder holder that I love. They're currently not sponsored, but they're currently £10 down from 20 at Argos at the minute. So if, if you're after one, that's the place to go. <laughs> This is my new seating area, just a little bit wider than what I had before. Um, I'm gonna grass this over here and then just put um, all of this here, the planters, it's been done so I can put plant pots in there. So I'm gonna grow some flowers in there. That's one of the next jobs. Um, this is my squash bed and I've got corn in there and I've got some more actually growing on the top. So fortunately I've got my plot in front of the month. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be able to get the corn off of there. Um, and then here are some raspberries that I've just moved actually from where the seating area was. So I'm unsure as to whether to trim them down or just leave them as they are, hoping that they'll survive. But any tips, let me know. Um, here is a football net that I rescued as I was walking home. I saw it on the side of the road and carried it back to the plot with me. And I use it to grow my peas and run a beans up. This here is a windbreaker. It wasn't here before, but my polytunnel got really damaged by the wind last year. So my plot neighbours kindly built that for me. Here's Buddy the dog. Um, she makes everything take twice as long now on the plot <laughs> but it's great to have her here um this is quite a chaotic strawberry bed so this is still a, a job to do i'm going to dig all of these out put them in pots in the polytunnel over the winter and i'll very likely have lots to give away um i made the mistake of putting mint in the ground i just love it so i think even though i'm more stretched with space now I don't think I can get rid of it because I just love it so much. It's chocolate mint, but maybe I need to just dig a little bit out and just make it a little bit smaller. And then I've got some onions here to harvest. Um, as we go round, this was actually a job that I did a couple of days ago. This compost bin here used to be here, but I needed the space now, so I've lifted it up and actually that compost there was just what was at the bottom of the bin and I've used that to make another bed. Um, apple tree and then as we go round this is just here just for my plants and flowers and maybe just for anything that can grow over there so beans I think at the moment. Um, my plot is quite tidy at the minute just because I've just had some time on it so I feel like I need to share with you my shed which I can't get in just to counteract it it's very much a case of open the door and chuck stuff in at the minute <laughs> got strawberries absolutely chaos here um, and at the minute this is a little bit of a dumping area but I'm gonna grow I've got a lovely honeysuckle that I want to grow up here and I'm gonna get some ivy as well and here is my polytunnel so um, I've just tidied this up and I've dug out all of my cucumbers, which got, I think, powdery mildew is, is what it's called. They're not, they're no good anymore. Um, fortunately, I'm not drinking at the minute. Uh, just, just to sort of help me feel a little bit better health-wise. And if, because if I was, I'd be very upset because I have cucumber in my gin. So I usually get through a lot of them. 
I planted some lettuce and rocket here. Here are my aubergines, not much happened with them. I've got a sweet potato, I'm desperate for my first sweet potato. Um, I've got some peppers and chilies here, pretty fuchsia up there. And then I've got my tomatoes. Um, and I've just actually dug this out because I had one tomato plant that didn't look so healthy. So I've dug it out and I've just made this little bed here and I've got some peas in there. So I love, 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 love peas out of the pod. So I'm hoping that they'll come up. And once the tomatoes are out, obviously, I'll put some netting up. And I've got plans to do some um, beans in here as well. That's the next job. So that's me now. Um, plot is a lot smaller, but I feel a lot happier now because I think I can keep it ticking over. And that just means I can enjoy it. So, yeah, thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my plot tour. Bye bye. There we go. That was Amanda's plot. What a great looking plot. I know she mentioned there's uh, health problems during it. I hope you, I don't know Amanda is watching tonight, hope you are okay. Um, great looking plot though. Lovely to see. We always love looking at people's plots. So please do feel free to send a video anytime for us to play in. And there's a lot of love going in. We've had a Jones saying excellent plot. Looks good, Amanda. It's from Digwell. Uh, Idaho says, your plot looks awesome. Kate says, lovely, uh, lovely plot. Uh, Kerry says, lovely plot. Um, what a gorgeous plot. Lo great tour, thanks. Bethan's, great pot, plot, lovely job. There we go. Lot and lots of love. Now, before we get on with this list... I had a delivery this come through this week, and it's something we mentioned last week. It's a pouch of super soil. And this actually came from, he's in the audience tonight, Digwell Green Fingers. Um, he sent me a, a lovely little letter with it. Uh, the red letter reads, every Sunday I have to watch this god-awful show. Um, <laughs> no, I'm only joking. That's not what he said at all. Uh, what he says is that... Um, he still has quite a few of these sample packets uh, available if anybody is interested. All he needs is £1.25 for postage. Uh, just email supersoil at digwellgreenfingers.co.uk if you are interested in that. Um, what he's also recommended that I do, and I thought we might, I might try and do this as a bit of a challenge. I thought a bit of a new feature we could do each week is that you guys come up with a challenge for me to do. Um, so that, 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 that I can make a video to show the following week. So what I want you guys to sort of suggest to me, I could do a side to by side comparison using this. I probably something like lettuce or something in a bed. What do you guys think? Should we do something like that? And what should we grow? Lettuce, radish, perhaps beetroot. Um, let us know. Don't forget. Also, we need a sew along video for next week uh, and get the idea. Uh, Amanda says, thanks, Richard. Yes, the long COVID, long COVID is so much better, but still not back to normal, so I've had to scale down. Thanks for the kind words. Digwell says, don't be too bothered by powdery mildew. It seldom damages a plant. In fact, it encourages new growth. Um, uh, Digwell, yes, please. You will make Richard's dad very happy. Thank you. Email supersoil at digwellgreenfingers.co.uk I should have made a, a thing up ahead to, to, for that uh, I'd love one please it's say so £1.25 for postage and packaging Money Boots has joined um, late again indeed indeed so yeah super soil this stuff what we're going to test it out Suggest to me a an experiment we could do. Obviously, it's going to take more than a few weeks, but we'll make a video, a challenge where we can do using this stuff that I can start over this week, and we'll see how it goes in the future. Um, any ideas? Very, very welcome. Right. So where were we? We mentioned garlic. Um, we kale. Anybody got any particular favourites of kale that they want to grow? Get in there. We are getting there through this list. Um, 
of things of what we might grow. I mean, I'm a big lover of kale. I grow quite a bit of it, but it's more for a winter crop. Um, I've been potting up some kale this week to go down on the allotment. Um, let us let us know if you've got any particular favourite varieties that you want. Money Boots says, just heard super soil. Steve sent me a pack last year. I've used it on all my beds last year, this year. Next crops since I had next crop best crops since I had my allotment. So it's 100% organic. I think it's microbes that go into this. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this works out. Um, I mean, that will make something like, what was it, 1,000 litres, didn't it say? I can't remember. He's left left me instructions, and it will take, it'll make, it will grow on. Uh, so I'm just laughing because Turbo Stream, oh, that, sorry, that's not the one that I said. Shall we grow lettuce? Let us know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't actually realise I said that, so um, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, Digwell says, loads of favourites for kale. Been a lot, not a fan, indeed. Nigel says, it's a bit messy, that's super sorry. He has warm, it is a bit messy as well. Uh, what else have we got? My dwarf curly kale seems to be doing well so far. Um, lettuce for quick results. Yeah, we'll do the lettuce side by side. I know what we'll do. We'll, we'll do that then. We'll grow lettuce in a side by side. Um, uh, let us know, though, for the sew along an idea as well. Lettuce for quick results. Yeah. Um, Kohlrabi. Anybody growing kohlrabi next year? I certainly am because I quite like this stuff. I prefer it over turnips. Uh, leeks as well is one on the list. So uh, kale, uh, kohlrabi. Kohlrabi for me is to be super schmitz, whatever it's called. Um, but leeks, I'm growing lots of leeks this year. Or, um, I can't think of what, some of my favourite. Bulgarian Giant is one I'm growing, and it's done really, really well. Really nice, big, big plants. I mean, I don't really grow big plants. I prefer to grow good-tasting plants, but that sounds like a good one to me. Uh, I only like kale sautéed in olive oil with garlic and soy sauce. That sounds delicious, actually. I feel I'm quite hungry over the sound of that. Uh, I seem to be useless at growing lettuce for some reason. Fail every time. Maybe it gets too hot or it's the slugs and snails. Uh, Graham says, Carn gorm? Carn gorm? Carn gorm? Our leeks aren't nice. Made a note of that. I'll think of that. That sounds like a good one. I'm probably pronouncing that very, very wrong, but I'm trying my best. Um, I'm trying to think of the other one, leeks that I grow. I mean, leeks are always pretty successful for me. I just find that you've just got to sow them fairly early and then get them in once the first early potatoes come out. Uh, lettuce needs fairly low temperatures to germinate. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and and make sure the slugs and snails aren't a problem. Now, onions is next on my list of things that I want to grow. Um, and I've been debating this a lot. I've, I always have much more luck growing my onions from sets. And I do autumn, and I don't think I did spring onion sets this year for some reason. But I did sow onions on Christmas Day, Boxing Day, one of the two. And uh, they, they they were from seed, but they haven't grown that great. So I'm debating whether to do sets or seeds next year. Um, but what would you recommend? I put a video out just the other day for onions, or over wintered onions. Musselberg, that's the one I was thinking of. Musselberg is a good leak. 
And Autumn Giant. Autumn Giant. And Stocky is another one. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, Graham says, I, try I tried Globo. Globo onions from seed. The best I've tried. That sounds interesting. Globo. I've not tried them before. Um, as I said, it, for me, I just seem to get better results from sets. And I don't know quite what I'm doing wrong yet. But I'd like to get some nice big onions. Seeds are cheaper, of course, but I just find from sets to be doing a little bit better. Uh, parsnips is next. Ooh, crikey. Parsnips. Um, trying to rush through these now. Uh, Nigel says, onion seed always will be summer mine in October and over winter. What varieties do you do, Nigel? Uh, Turbo Stream says, I probably need to grow lettuce in a bigger container and not prick them out. They germinate okay, but always get green fly or the slugs get them on the ground. Yeah. Parsnips. So I didn't do too great with parsnips this year, I'll be honest with you. Nigel's came in with Gladiator F1. I, or so I thought. I sowed some in the veggie pod and some in the ground. And the ones in the ground, only two germinated. And then the ones in the veggie pod, I was clearing out the allotment or clearing out the veggie pod one day and I accidentally harvested about four parsnips. Now, not a huge amount, don't get me wrong, but they, they were doing OK. And my lettuce does better in a container. Anna Jones says parsnip is gladiator. Another one for gladiator. Uh, Digra says sets are out for me now, seeds every time, fed up with bolting. Okay, very interesting stuff. Um, so gladiator seems like a popular parsnip. Nobody else saying anything else. Then we got, it's going to be a tough one to get through, peas. So we've had a lot of luck with peas, but then you've got garden peas, sugar snap peas, snow peas, or whatever you may call them. Um Digwell says parsnip TZ9045. TZ9025. Um, hope you're not making that up just to trick me. <laughs> Nigel says uh, seed onions, Vento, Kelsey, Long Red Florence, and Alistair. I think that's pronounced. Um, yeah. So yeah, good ideas there. Idaho says hollow crowned and they have reseeded them themselves for parsnips. Um, parsnips, turbo stream are saved seed, but poor germination this year. And in Hurst Green Shaft, that's always a popular one, isn't it? Hurst Green Shaft. I always do Meteor, I find to be a good one. Meteor. Anna Jane says, Oregon Sugar Pot. Oregon Sugar Pot. That's an interesting one. Uh, Idaho says, I'm lazy about shelling the regular peas, so I only grow sugar snap peas now. Fair enough. Parsnips of white gem. I think they're the ones I grew, actually. White gem. I can't quite remember. But, uh, yeah, that's the idea. Uh, parsnips. Giant... Jenny says, Giant Mange 2 and Hurst Green Shaft for me. Mange 2. Mange 2, isn't it? Not, not what I said. And then Digra, Dwarf Pea, Hurst Green Shaft, show winner and tasty. Good ideas. Next, I've got peppers, bell peppers or sweet peppers and chili peppers. So for me, I've got to grow jalapenos because I love jalapenos. Um and then um, sweet peppers and cayenne pepper we've got to do as well. Make a list like that. Um, get your ideas rolling. Idaho says, I grow sugar and sugar snap, please, in stacking planter and Cascadia sugar snaps in raised bed. Both have been great. Uh, excellent stuff. And Turbo Stream says, my peas were the supporters one, which I think were Hurst Green Shaft, if I remember correctly, but I could be wrong on that. But yeah, um, 
I lose track. I lose track of of what seeds are where sometimes. Um, what else have we got? Nigel. Nigel says, I like shelling peas while watching Tour de France on TV. Uh, and he also says, too many chilies and peppers to list. Love them all. Funny enough, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because there's so many good ones. I was going to say, did next week for the sew along, I could sow some chili peppers because I like to get some sown around now to get through the winter. So I'm going to put that down if that's all right with everyone. Sew along chilies. Okay. Um, I grow many varieties of peppers and chilies. Yeah, I have the same trouble. Uh, we got, I think we'll save potatoes for another day because I think we can do something on that. Radish. Radish. French breakfast always seems to do well for me. So I'm sticking with that. Um, we'll be going into some of the other, the, the, the many, di um, um the the asian chili the asian radishes the moily radishes soon as well so that's my idea kate says i'm growing erotica chilies from south devon chili farm because i refuse to grow up i'm gonna have to write that down as well erotica um just for a bit of fun of course uh so along chilies cool yeah excellent Peppers, California Wonder, and Big Ben Corno di Toro Rosso. Yeah, California Wonder is a good one, and the other as well. Um, Jenny says, I've just ordered Habadanda and King of the North, hoping to overwinter the crap purple chilies from this year and sugar stripey. Good ideas, good ideas. Good. It, there's a lot of peppers and chilies out there. There's always more of those than anything else. Uh, Radish, Mar Nigel says French breakfast and sparkler. That's a good one, actually, sparkler. But I'm with you with French breakfast completely. Um, uh, Digwell also says radish sparkler free, pretty. And Anna Jones says sparkler for round ones as well. Yep, yeah, okay, we'll do those. Next, we've got spinach. Spinach. I love spinach. And then we're not talking about perpetual spinach. We are talking about proper spinach, baby leaf spinach. Um, I think the one that I sowed a few weeks ago was, was it not? I can't think what it was called now. I want to say meteor, but that's not quite right. But it's along those lines. Um, that's going to annoy me, but it... Um, it begins with N, and it's annoying me because I cannot remember what it was. Jenny says, really enjoyed the violet radishes this year. Violet radishes, never heard of them, but they sound very interesting indeed. I think it's always good to get some different colours, isn't it, into our, not just our diets, but also into our gardens and our allotments. Uh, Idaho says, you've inspired me to sow some radish seeds in a snacking planter where I just pulled out the spent snap peas. Give it a try. Radish, I think. They're quick to grow, but they are fantastic plants, I think, anyway. And I'm sure a lot of people will agree with me. Um, but yes, spinach, spinach. Any varieties of spinach that you have in your favourite? We've also after that we've got squash which is butternut squash or pumpkin for me it's got to be crown prince because for me it's one of the best tasting pumpkins um and then waltham butternut squash because i love to, to to grow butternut squashes uh idaho says quick to grow is what i need right now i think it's what we all need really isn't it this time of year it just need to get these things planted and growing um yeah yeah um am i going too fast because i know we're running out of time but we're nearly there nearly there we've got sweet corn tomatoes turnips and watercress uh as the last ones on my list sweet corn obviously gotta grow sweet corn um but many different varieties we've got get rid of that quickly 
Digwell says for spinach, Python RZ51. I'm going to write Python. It's annoying me what the variety I grow, and it begins with M. Um, so I can't, I can't remember what it is, but it's a really nice one. I have eight packets of Spanish and spinach America, so I guess I'm sowing that variety. I know how you feel. I've got loads of these seeds everywhere. Um, but squash, yeah, uh, sweet corn, sweet corn. Got some good sweet corn growing down on the allotment at the moment. Again, I can't remember the varieties. I wanted to grow some popping sweet corn. Let's put that down there for next year. Popping or popcorn sweet corn. We'll put that down and we'll think we'll do it for next year. Uh, either who says, I will mention that perpetual spinach is going great for me. Is is actually a chard, but tastes like spinach and thrives in the heat. Other spinach bulbs quickly for me. Yeah, I, I agree. Just it's a big one. Uh, sweet or no preference as long as it stays stirred in. <laughs> yep. Yep, I know what you mean there. It's digging up. Nigel says tomatoes, crimson crash, crimson plum, crimson blush, and sweet million, tum million tumbler. Completely with you. My tomato has been wiped out by blight, apart from my indoor tomatoes, of course. Um, so I should have stuck with just my. I was trying to use up all my seeds. But tomatoes, it's all the blight resistant ones for next year. Uh, Anna Jones says, Lark or Swift are the only ones. I think Swift was one of the ones I was thinking of. Lark, put that down there. Uh, although Nigel has also said Incredible F1. I think that was also the one of the ones I grew this year for Sweet Corn. Whew. Getting there. We are getting there. Um, well, uh, where have I missed something? Uh, I hear you can grow dwarf beans. Do you think I should try sugar snap peas? Yep, give them a try. Got nothing to lose. I think you could. Um, probably get away with growing them now as well. Has anyone done glass gem sweet corn? Looks beautiful, so I'm tempted. Not heard of it. Glass gem. I'll make a night of that. Gem. Uh, Jenny says squash, not enough room. To type of varieties, top ones are Crown Prince, Pink and Blue, Banana, Blue Hubbard, and Butternut Hunter. Good ideas, good indeed. Yeah, no, there's so much, so many different varieties, isn't it? It's hard to get that. Digwell says popping corn is easier to grow than sweet corn, as it does not really matter about 100% pollination, isn't that true? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, love sweet corn anyway. Uh, Jenny says, sweet corn, I will grow a few for cobs, but we much prefer baby corn. Baby corn, I should probably put down as well. Baby corn. I think the baby corn this year is mini pop. Mini pop. Mini pop. I should put that down for next year as well. Um, so, yeah, when it comes to tomatoes, I know Digwell did a taste test on the tomatoes. So, there's quite a few there, but the crimson. Well, the blight-resistant ones are going to be the ones I think I'm going to be focusing on next year for outside. In the greenhouse, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, experimental. Digwell sent the Bradley's grape tomatoes out this year for the uh, for um, supporting members. Um, and they went down. They've grown really well. They're really – Bradley's atomic, aren't they, I think? They are really – Nice, it has to be said. Uh, nice colour as well. So I'm going to try and grow those next year. Dig well, speak of a devil. It has been said somewhere that the crush family of tomatoes are losing their blight resistance due to the blight mutation. Same as Sarpo potatoes. It, yes, I have heard that. I have heard that. But that's like blight is always changing varieties, isn't it? This year it's one thing. Next year it might be something else. Um, but we stand a better chance, I think. Tomatoes, Ozark, Lucid Gem, Lucid Gem, and Green Zebra, um, Beauty Keen, Brad's Atomic, and I'm going to try Rebel Starfighter next year. Beautiful tomatoes, excellent stuff. Um, 
Beautiful tomatoes add extra dimension to the plate. Indeed, indeed. We did add turnips and watercress as well, which I do grow turnips. Um, don't know why, because I'm not a lover of them. Watercress as well, a difficult one to grow from seed. I find it much easier to take a root cutting or to get a piece of watercress from a supermarket and try and get that to root than trying to grow it from seed. Hargrave, I swear by Mountain Magic. Actually, Mountain Magic are really nice too. Mountain Magic. Blight resistant as well. Skin slightly thicker, but taste lovely. I love them. I quite like Mountain Magic. It's only because I wanted to get rid of seeds this year, try and reduce my seed stock down. I didn't grow them. But um, I'm kind of regretting that, as you'll hear on tomorrow's podcast. Right, guys. Um, I think we've got there somehow. I hope that's given you a few ideas. I think we will discuss potatoes another time, possibly into next year. Um, but what we need to do, so with next week, the challenge is going to be to use the super soil for a lettuce side by side. So we'll, we'll do that. I'm going to do a sew along of chilies. And then, oh, what's the subject for next week? What do you guys want to talk about next week? Let me know in the comments. While I remember as well on, not next week, the Sunday after, which is the 3rd of September, there's probably not going to be a live show. I'm very, very sorry, and I hate to say it, but uh, I'm doing all the maths. Oh, no, there is pictures. There is pictures. Sorry, I'm forgetting things. We're going to go a little bit late tonight, I'm afraid. Um, next Sunday, no, not the Sunday the 3rd. I'm probably, because I'm up Essex, Suffolk Way for three days. Then I'm at Audley End House um, for Garner's World Autumn Fair on I'm doing a stage talk. I've just done the maths. I'm not going to be, by the time I get home, it's either going to be late or I've got to try and see Amanda and everything as well. So I'm probably not going to do a show on there. I might come up with something else instead, but we'll worry about that near at the time. Anyway, for your pictures, we do have a few pictures. We're going to run into overtime, I'm afraid, tonight, but never mind. Now, Nicola's got herself a windowsill propagator, as you can see here. I quite like the look of this, actually, it has to be said. Uh, heated, so it should help start those seeds off a little bit early. Steve has been at his local show, as we said, and he's got first place by the looks of it. I think it was first best vegetable exit exhibit with these carrots. They do look like good carrots, I have to say. Um, wonder what variety they are, if you can let us know, Steve. Jenny has made a few savings from Wilco's. The seeds are off um, off to a very good discount. So there you go. Uh, I think these were like 20p a packet or something I saw when I popped into our local Wilco's, but well worth going into Wilco's and seeing what they've got. A lot of our ones have been stripped of all the seeds, I've noticed. But discounts galore. Uh, Kate, she's grown this very large carrot. Uh, was asking if there's an entry for the, um, uh, the 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 show that we're doing, the alternative veg grower show. Uh, there's not one for large carrots, but if it's a success this year, we will do one for next year. Scott has been harvesting this lot, a good lot of squash, tomatoes, beans, a good lot of veg, isn't there? Sweet corn even, I can see. So very, very very good to see. Uh, what else have we got? Stuart, he mentioned that the beetroot last week hasn't been doing so well, and he's posted this picture. Uh, I think it needs thinning out. Um, but if you go and have a look at the picture in the Facebook group and let us know what you think as well. Uh, I think that is it. Yeah, keep sharing those photos, guys. Post them in our Facebook group. Send them to me via social media or email me, richard, at the Ground Podcast dot co dot uk thank you so much for reminding me about the photos because i nearly forgot it digwell says sent valerie carrots um as, as those ones in the exhibition so there we go what else we got uh 
Kate says, I've also come across a bloody butcher speak on Deep Red. I'll try that too. <laughs> I'm starting to get a bit worried about you, Kate, with your, your ones that you, you're attracted to, but good enough. Money Witch says, Furline was also a good blight resistant tomatoes, but no longer available. I tried them and they still caught blight, I found. Um, I do find even the blight resistant ones catch blight, but I just shrug it off. Jenny says, I have over 80 varieties of tomato seeds, plus my wish list from Digwell video, plus I have to check my favourite suppliers. I may need to rent a paddock to grow them all. I know the problem. This is it. It gets so many seeds, you don't know what to do with them all, do we? Do we? Um, yeah, yeah. Toby Stream, when do you plan slash replan your allotment growing space? That might be another one. That might be, I think, that might be one that we try actually that's plan slash replan your allotment plan replan allotment that could be one that we do next week if anybody else wants to go along with it uh that carrot was an ox heart that sounds like a good good one and it looked like it did quite well there we go i think we have caught up with the the uh the comments Oh, that was a that was a tough one to get through, wasn't it? Um, I think we might have to break that down if we try and do it again next week. Let's wrap this up, anyway, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. We will be back again next Sunday at six, where we have got. We get. When do you plan slash replan your allotment? I'll work out that question a little bit better. We're going to sow some chilies and we're going to do a lettuce side by side as a challenge so um yeah i'll see you all again next sunday podcast out uh, tomorrow all about blight i think that just about covers everything uh right i'm gonna go because i'm rambling again thanks so much for joining me have a great week everyone let us know don't forget to share your photos of your garden uh or your allotment you can via the ways that I've already said. We will be back again next time. So until then, please take care.